If you watch my videos, you may recognize the purple people eater. Um, it's a rotating tumbler I made um, a couple of years ago. Uh, so it's filled with uh, abrasive materials. It rotates and it basically can just rust off anything you put in it. Um, today we're going to be cannibalizing it. So we're taking it apart. We're going to reuse what parts of it we can. Uh, and we're going to turn it into a vibrating tumbler. Let's see how it goes. So the rotating tumbler we made actually worked quite well. Um, so I've used it a couple of times and it's, it, it gives pretty good uh, results when you're cleaning rust off stuff. Um, but it does come with a couple of major downsides. The first one is when it's full of materials, I mean it, without it, it weighs an absolute ton. <laughs> it's really heavy to move and when it's full of sand it's just crazy to, to try and lift and move. So it's not convenient to store away because you can't really easily lift it and move it around. Uh, the other thing is it's physically huge. Um, as you can probably tell in this garage, it's pretty well stuffed with all the bits of crap I save uh, for projects like this. Um, and say, I, I've just not got the room to store it or have it anywhere out where I can conveniently use it, which would be really nice. Um, the only other thing that clearly went, kind of went wrong with it was the seal on the door. Um, so when I made it, I used a bit of cheap foam around the seal. Um, and after a while, I degraded um, and it would start to leak. So the sand cop start coming out a bit. Um, so you could probably fix that by using a decent quality seal, but I'm just a tight arse and I didn't. Uh, but yeah, so yes, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to take it all apart. So we're going to use what parts we can again. Um, we're going to turn it into a vibrating tumbler, which I think we can do in a lot more compact fashion. And I think the end results will probably be more effective as well. So as you do, I took a look on YouTube to see how other people have done it. And I couldn't actually find any designs or anything similar uh, to how to create it, at least in this scale. So most tumblers you buy um, are kind of a round dome and the motor spins that way uh, and it vibrates around like that. And then kind of the, the material and parts swirl around. You can actually buy them off the shelf, so they're pre-made if you want to go and buy one. Uh, in fact, I'll find some links and I'll chuck them in the description below. Um, however, I actually want to do one um, in the same plane as this, so lengthwise. Um, and the only ones I could find were industrial units, so things in massive workshops and, and factories. Um, so what I'm kind of doing is a little bit unusual, a little bit unique. Uh, it's not how most people have done it, um, so hopefully it'll work. But we're hopefully going to squash that design down into something that's more usable. And yeah, I should be fine. For the new vibrating tumbler, we're going to be using a new barrel. It's actually um, a roller from a smaller um, lawnmower. Um, it's actually about as long as the original one is wide, so it's much, much smaller. To be honest, the stuff I tend to do in this garage, I, I never needed anything as big as that. I just didn't. Um, so most of the things I tend to do is nuts and bolts and maybe tools and stuff. Um, and this should be more than big enough to do that. For a motor, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the original one or not. Um, I don't actually think it'll spin fast enough to be uh, as effective as I want it to be. Uh, I have, however, got a couple of washing machine motors. Um, so I'm happy to chuck those on. Uh, this is out of the vacuum cleaner. It's not tested, however. And this is actually the original motor from the um, lawnmower. So I'm sure we can use one of these. Um, depends on size and how it all measures up, really. I'm somehow going to have to create a counterweight which runs off the uh, off the end of the motor. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to create something separate which this drives, um, or if I'm just going to hang a weight off uh, the end of the motor itself. Um, I'm not really sure how much um, abuse the bearings in this will take. Uh, so it may just destroy it in no time at all. I've really no idea. cleaned up lovely really like that so i'm just ashamed to use it and um, if you're a weirdo like me that thinks um shiny bits of steel can be a thing of beauty um, check out my uh, my other channel which is art upcycle sculpture um, i'll link to it in the description below and possibly up top um, i don't post there very often um, but i make bits of upcycled randomness on there uh, which you might find interesting I've removed the central spindle and the two bits off the end. Um, I haven't filmed it because I didn't want people to copy and be doing it. Basically, I had to take the um, the guard off the angle grinder to get in there. That's not really something I recommend. Now, I've got my cut out as a lid. I'm not really sure it's actually necessary. Um, so I'm gonna, probably going to build it without the lid on for now. Let's see how it goes. I'm not sure how much dust and stuff it'll create. I, I don't imagine it'll be a lot, but I just don't know. Never built one of these before. Um, and also, I don't really want this rattling because it's going to rattle like an absolute nightmare if, uh, unless I make it tight. Um, so for now, I'm building without it, so we may put it on towards the end of the build. For the springs, I'm using these. Um, I've got a big bag of springs I've saved from my boys' trampolines over the years. Uh, I saved all the metalwork and stuff off them. Uh, these ones are a lot stiffer, uh, and these ones are a bit more flexible and bendy, so I'm going to go with the softer ones for now. 
For the frame, I'm going to be using this, which is relatively lightweight balustrade or railing. Um, a mate of mine gave me a few pieces, which was discarded when somebody had a balustrade fitted, so free of charge. Thank you very much, Nigel. Got some 30 mil washers I'm using just to uh, to hang the springs from. Plan B, uh, I had to find some old washers. Uh, the Volkswagen guys here probably recognise these. Um, for whatever reason, the new ones I bought all started snapping. Um, so the first two bent alright, but after that I couldn't get a single one to bend without breaking. And I even tried warming them up. So not all washers are good for bending. So that's the vague plan. We've got our washers for hooks, we've got our springs on there. Um, so we need some space between the, the frame and the tumbler. Where our tumbler ends. So we're going to chop the frame down to about here. So frames together, springs are on, barrels hung. It's wibbly wobbly. <laughs> uh, so next, uh, we need to make some kind of weight for the bottom. So when it spins, um, it causes the barrel to, to vibrate. To make that, I'm going to be using this old coach bolt uh, from my box of bits and a couple of the bearings from the original tumbler, which we've uh, taken out. Um, it doesn't quite fit, so we're going to need to take the shaft down a little bit so they uh, slide on nicely. I don't have any fancy lathes, so we're going to have to get a bit creative. Fingers crossed. Yay, awesome. That took surprisingly little time to actually do that. So this is one of the arms from the original uh, tumbler um, and the bearing retainer of the bearing that I made for it. And that is going to be chopped off and attached on the bottom, something like so. Um, we're going to have to make it boltable um, for now because um, I'm not 100% sure of the, the height or the, the distance from the barrel I'm going to need. Um, and also to remove the um, the bearings and uh, potentially alter the weight on the, the shaft itself. I have to be able to take it apart to do that. So I'm just drilling uh, and tapping a couple of holes in the bearing retainer. Basically when the bearing's in there, there's a little bit of movement, not super tight, and I don't want it rattling around. Uh, I'm pretty sure it'll do damage quite quickly. Uh, so I'm drilling and tapping these using um, a combination drill tap. Uh, I got these particular ones from Rennie Tool Company on eBay. I'll put a link below. Uh, they work very, very well. I'm very impressed with these ones. Beautiful. We're going to cut the end off our coach bolt. And then we're going to put a groove in it so we can fit a little half moon clip, a little circle clip in there. Uh, and that hopefully will mean we can fix the bearing and the rods together so they don't pull apart and it all stays in place. Moving around a bit much for this, but hopefully it will work. Excellent. Got our clip, got our bearing on. I will eventually be sitting in the holder like so. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so we've got our bar, got the clip on the end there, look. Put our bearing on. We've got a second groove cut in there for a second clip. We should retain the bearing in place. So all I need now is some kind of counterweight on here so it spins around and causes the vibration. Um, I've got this bit of off-cut steel which came from one of the barrels earlier which I cut off. It's got a fair bit of weight to it so I'm basically I'm just thinking of cleaning it up and welding it on the side there. I don't really know how much weight I need to have hanging off, off the side of it to, to cause an effective vibration within the, the tumbler itself. Um, obviously the heavier and the denser the material I use the more energy I'm going to have to put into there um, to make it effectively tumble. Right, the parts. We've got our little holder. Um, I'm not sure if these um, bolts on the side will actually stay in place or they just vibrate loose. I have put nylocks on there, which are upside down because you can't easily thread them the other way around um, to lock the nut steady so it doesn't move, but they could well vibrate loose. I don't know in time. Um, and it's possible they may also damage the shell of the bearing in there. 
Um, I'm sure they'll last longer than the end of this video. Um, so if they do cause damage long term, I will update the description below um, and advise what change I've made. And I've got our central spinner, or whatever you call it. Uh, the bearing's locked in place with a couple of clips. This one slides, but it's going to be locked in place in here. Uh, and our counterweight, I have actually weighed, uh, weighed it now, and that's 88 grams. So with a bit of weld, probably looking about 100 grams of the counterweight on there. That should fit in there. That should fit in there. So we just need to bolt it onto the bottom of the barrel. I'm going to put a small thread in here. I know it's a very, very thin barrel and with very little in the way of actual thread going into it. But I'm hoping by putting the uh, the bolt through here and threading it through it and then locking a nylock on the inside, it's just going to help lock things in place and stop them vibrating loose because this thing is going to be shaking around like crazy. <laughs> I threaded the bolts through from the inside, uh, so there's minimal um, things stuck up on the inside of the actual barrel, so it doesn't interfere with anything. Um, I suspect these are actually going to vibrate loose. Um, I'm putting nylocks on on the outside of the washer. Um, I may double these up. Um, ultimately, once this is all working and if my weight's doing its job, um, I won't need to take it apart again, and I may just actually weld it in place so it's permanent. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> So I've took some massive uh, nuts and a couple of lump hammers into my barrel. I can't imagine there ever been any more weight than that in the barrel. And I'm trying to work out how far the barrel is going to drop on these springs, which appears to be about that. So the barrel drops about two inches. Um, so using that information, we can look at building the frame, putting the legs on there. I've also got to take into account the height of the motor because it's got to come up slightly so it sits on top of the frame. Um, and I do want to give it a little bit of adjustability so I can raise it up or lower it down uh, depending on the load on the barrel. The barrel is currently weighted down about five and a half kilograms, uh, which gives us our approximate height. So I've set the motor roughly where it needs to be. Uh, we need to strap it down onto this plate, which I'm just going to do temporary with some tie wraps for now. Um, I didn't want to destroy the motor by drilling it on um, for the time being, because I'm not sure it's going to be the end solution. Um, when I used it with the rotating tumbler, it was far too powerful, and it may well be for this as well. To create the flexible link between the motor and the barrel, um, I'm using a bit of radiator hose. Um, so yeah, I've gone through my big collection of cast off bits of hose uh, and I managed to squeeze this particular one onto the end of the motor which is quite a big uh, spline to go onto. Um, unfortunately to downsize it, I use another piece of uh, hose which will actually go inside there, just, and then so I can clamp it down a bit of a uh, one of the cut down bolts we used earlier. So that should go in there, all being well, a bit of a tight fit, that'll go in there. and it should allow them to clamp down on there nice and hard. Now, I don't know if this solution is going to work, I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know if it'll slip, if it'll last, if it'll just split. Don't know. Um, but, that's all I've got for now. So that's what we're going to roll with. I bought the speed controller on eBay a couple of years ago for the rotary tumbler. Uh, so it worked really, really well for that, so I'm hoping it'll be okay for this too. Um, it was about 15 quid. I'll try and put a link below for one if I can find it on eBay still. Nearly forgot the earth wire. I do not want zapping off this thing. There's also a secondary earth which attaches to the motor. So we are pretty much in, I think. So we're fully laden with bolts and hammers to about five or five and a half kilos. Got a link between the two connected. Hopefully it's going to hold up. Right. First try and I'm a bit scared. Right. Goggles on. <laughs> Hopefully nothing's going to fly off at any speed. Ah. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, it's kind of terrified. Uh, hopefully it won't be so noisy when it's got media instead of hammers in there. So there we have it, my vibrating tumbler. Um, have I achieved what I started out to do? Me, mm, not so sure. <laughs> uh, so in terms of noise reduction, with hammers in, it's still quieter than the old one. So yes, I have for that. But it's not exactly the compact design I initially wanted to, to do. Um, basically the, the motor ended up being further away and longer than I really planned. I was kind of going to hang it underneath. But there wasn't, just in, there wasn't enough space to create what I needed to create if it was underneath the barrel, with the barrel being so small. Um, so hence it's offset and it's quite a long machine. It is however quite narrow so I hope I can push it against a wall in a corner somewhere and it won't be too obtrusive in the garage. If you want to put your hand in your pocket uh, and do away with the complication of the washing machine motor and creating something that's going to cause it unbalanced and probably be ultimately more reliable long term um, you can actually buy a, a kind of a wobble motor or something, I'm not sure what they call it um, but it's, a, it's a sealed unit, complete unit, and you bolt it to the bottom of the tank, turn it on and it vibrates um, so you can actually match it directly into the tank so you can make your frame a little bit more compact use short springs so you could make a smaller unit using something like that um, obviously this is using scrap parts and it's cost basically time and I've aged three days doing it <laughs> so all we've got to do now is test it to see if it works which <sighs> I can't uh, basically the tumbling media hasn't arrived yet so finding the tumbling media, um, it's been an absolute nightmare. I have literally spent hours on YouTube, Google, eBay, contacting sellers uh, and phoning people up, trying to find out what basically works in a, in a vibrating tumbler effectively against steel rusty parts. Um, and it's really hard to, to find the answer because no one says, yeah, this one works really, really well. Um, so either the video results look pretty mediocre or if they work really well, these work, seem to work too well. I think there might be fake videos. I don't. I just can't trust them. Um, so I have ordered something which uh, I'm told should work well. Uh, whether I'll get into threads of bolts and stuff because it's, it's larger media, I'm not sure yet. But we'll say we'll try it. And assuming it works well, um, I will link all just in the description below all the stuff in the next video, uh, and probably put in this one as well. Uh, so I don't like to split videos into two halves, but unfortunately we're gonna have to do that. This is probably a big video anyway. Um, so hopefully I will see you for part two. Take care. Bye bye.